In our last video, we looked at how we can create a simple contouring toolpath. Now in this video, I'd like to discuss some various geometry selection techniques we can use for creating our contouring toolpaths. If you plan on following along, you can use the same part file you're working with from the last video, or open and save part 7.4. Let's begin by making a change to our model to open the door for some of these unique geometry selection techniques. Move over to the Configuration Manager and activate the Width Bottom Cut. By activating the Width Bottom Cut, we no longer have a single contour that completely goes around the perimeter of our part. So, with that in mind, let's move back to the Cam Manager, right-click the 2D contour, and select Edit. The warning has told us that due to the geometry configurations, the contour can no longer be completed. So we're going to go ahead and select New Geometry. We need to tab over to the Geometry tab on the Property Manager and we can now begin selecting Geometry. There's two ways we can do this and I'd like to show you both. One would be to select the geometry of the sketch that created the initial extrude. This would be done by expanding the feature tree expanding the boss extrude and selecting the sketch. Of course we may need to reverse the direction to ensure that the cutter is on the correct side of the sketch. However, if you didn't have a sketch that fully defined the outside perimeter of your part, how would you go about it? You could go ahead and create a new sketch that was the entire profile of your part, but there is in fact a simpler way. So, remove Sketch 2 from your selection window. We need to start by unselecting Propagate Along Z because Propagate Along Z will select all of the edges in a contour that are at the same Z depth. And we don't want that. We want to just select the edges that are tangent to our selection. So, let's roll the part around and this short edge at the bottom that starts half of the profile contour of our part we're going to select near the starting point. Again remember because Propagate Z was not on we didn't get this straight edge as it wasn't tangent to our selection. Now let's rotate around back to the other side and select the starting edge of the upper contour. Looking down from the top view, the two of those contours together complete the perimeter of our part. However, currently they're being contoured as two separate contours. All we need to do is select one of the little edges that joins the two contours vertically and HSM Works will then recognize that as one single contour. Moving the contour up to the highest Z depth. Now I will say by moving it up to the highest Z depth we have posed a little bit of a problem because we're contouring down to the depth of the contour meaning we're not going to machine all the way through the part. This can be easily corrected by going to the Heights tab on your Property Manager. Instead of machining down to the contour we can select that drop down and machine to a point. Now in the graphics area, select any edge that's at the bottom level of the part and the contour will now machine down to that edge. Of course our strategy for this part was to machine through the entire part by an extra 20 thousandths of an inch. So again we're going to use a bottom offset of negative decimal zero to zero. With the offset set, we can select OK. Again, leave your part file open and move on to the next video where we're going to look at roughing and finishing options for our contours.